publishers are becoming more and more reliant on online features these days, which has led to publishers to become slack with quality, causing game-breaking bugs on launch and games that have minimal or less content than was advertised. But the ability for patches and the content to come out later to fix these issues, I think it's about time someone goes back on titles of years past and asks, is it worth playing now? In today's site is Call of Duty Black Ops 3, a game released in late 2015 with a mixed reception, due to its jump packs and cybernetics. This was following the foundation of Advanced Warfare, which had a similar reception despite complaints of COD becoming too formulaic and needing a shift in gameplay dynamics. This caused a massive circle jerk about Call of Duty needing to be boots on the ground again. Speaking of gameplay and circle jerks, let's look at Black Ops 3's primary competition which is Advanced Warfare in Titanfall 2. But Dave, what about Infinite Warfare? Uh, we don't talk about that here. In the words of Filthy Commies, if you bring that up, we send you to Gulag. We'll start with gameplay mechanics as a foundation before you go into multiplayer, campaign and zombies. Black Ops 3 is a standard modern first person shooter, with different grenades, guns, attachments and equipment. What makes it different is its wall running and double jumps inspired by Advanced Warfare and Titanfall, however done in an unnecessarily complicated way. Unlike the two games mentioned, this increase in mobility is linked to a fuel bar causing sliding and jumping to be limited, disrupting the fluid movement created in Advanced Warfare. For example, you may slide to increase speed to jump over a claymore, but then be unable to do a second jump to go through a building's window because you've used up your fuel and then have to wait for that fuel to recharge. Most circumstances, this will result in you dying. This and the removal of the second jump's ability to quickly change direction could have been added in an attempt to balance movement for new players by making it slower and directionally limited. But instead, all it's done is made movement more difficult, clunky and rarely utilised with inexperienced players choosing to use cover and camping in buildings purely to avoid the movement system. This problem becomes far more obvious when you look at its competitor's map design. Both Titanfall and Advanced Warfare follow the rule of, if you can get onto that roof, you can stay there, with a few exceptions for game balance. Whereas Black Ops 3 has a strange visible walls and has taken steps to stop parkouring onto rooftops or unexpected positions, which ruins the freedom created through a central mechanic. I'll touch on this when discussing level design later on. Multiplayer has added heroes, you can choose to play with each character looking distinctly different and having a backstory, but in all honesty it feels like they were just made as an excuse for further monetization through cosmetics, but basically they act as a glorified score streak that you can't lose progress on. No one can hide from my sight. It's Hanoon. Oh, look at me! I'm Kaiba Akihiko! I have like an invincible shield that can block any attack and also like a super sweet sword that does infinity plus two damage and can cut through anything. Even like Wolverine claws and shit because I am so awesome and cool. Truly, you are the voice of a generation. What makes me a good demo man? If I were a bad demo man, I wouldn't be sitting here discussing it with you now, would I? I am heavy weapons guy. But it's too late. They forgot the first rule of survival. A real hunter always watches where he steps. How the blood soaked Protestant hell did you do that? Fuck you, that's how. I kill no man, but that. Stand 
I only noticed this while writing up this bit, but all those operators are basic bitches. Which is why for all their diversity, they feel like something should pop out of a care package. It does explain why I feel unnecessary in Advanced Warfare's tactical abilities felt far more useful. But you get the point, each specialist has an ability useful for a situation or getting kills. Although some people say it has the best gun balance in the series, my experience is the balance is okay, with some guns obviously better and some guns being completely useless. I would have to go into testing time to kill and how stats affect weapons to objectively find out how good the balancing is admittedly. I was choosing weapons of lower damage but good fire rate, accuracy, range and noticed weapons such as the ICR and VMP were better than their competition for versatility despite needing 4 or 5 shots to kill. The strange discrepancy I saw when looking at statistics on the wikis has made me suspect accuracy plays a bigger part in gunplay than expected. Statistically, the KN44 has a slightly better fire rate of 625 to the ICR's 600 and a steady 3 shot kill instead of a 4 or 5 shot kill on the ICR. Despite this, on both console and PC, the ICR was a better weapon. I suspect this is due to bullet deviation, a personal pet hatred of mine. It's most famous in Battlefield 1, and it's the most noticeable at longer ranges because the bullet goes in a different direction where the reticle is. I don't mean the second shot lands in a different position, I mean the bullet does not land where the reticle is placed. This is theoretical, but what should be taken away from this is that the statistics are unreliable, which has been a known issue for years now. My main problem with balance involves DLC versus non-DLC weapons. A good example of this is the Vespa, a 1200 rounds per minute gun that doubles the average fire rate of assault rifles and fires one and a half times faster than other SMGs. It's a 4 or 5 shot kill weapon with a good hip fire. Its only downfall is its high recoil and quick damage drop off, but using short bursts this gun can be used in any situation which is why when I first used it I felt like I was cheating. It shreds through enemies with its only downfall is that it uses a magazine per kill if your aim is complete potato. But that isn't a problem if you're versing veterans and you're a noob. The XMC is a DLC gun that I know is overpowered. Although its damage drops off significantly, causing it to be between a 3 and a 6 shot kill, it has the advantage of recoil, accuracy, range and a better time to kill than its closest rival, the VMP. The problem with it being DLC is that it can only be gotten in loot crates and with its close to medium range superiority, it's no surprise veterans use it regularly. This brings me to another problem with the multiplayer. Although I'm not sure all DLC weapons have an advantage, it certainly feels that way. Every time I picked up the RPK or M14, I managed to get multiple kills in quick succession, but this could be placebo. This is something Cold World War 2 did better. When DLC weapons came out, you could earn them through armory points or supply crates, and these crates were far more common than in Black Ops 3, and also dropped weapons far more often. This doesn't excuse the practice, I'm merely pointing out that the XCOD did this a lot better, and didn't seem like it was reaching for your wallet. COD World War 2 also made every gun seem equal to the others, a video for another time. Another issue is netcode. It's not uncommon to be behind cover for 2 or 3 seconds and still die because you are out in the open on someone else's screen. It's much more obvious than in previous CODs and can lead to a lot of WHAT THE FUCK I WAS BEHIND A SOLID BRICK WALL YOU FUCKING whore MOMENTS. Next is the level design. The maps are your basic 3 lane maps that Call of Duty has been doing for years. The problem is, these maps are designed for boots on the ground of some flank routes needing a wall run to use them, but other than that, the jump kits are completely pointless. Advanced Warfare and Titanfall 2 both encourage you to be creative with your positioning by removing invisible walls and letting you get to rooftops if you are determined enough. This can be really seen well when you compare it with the original Nuketown to Nuketown 3. Titanfall would have said, you wanted to get on top of that rooftop? Fucking go for it, you're sacrificing cover for a good sniper position. Now maybe these restrictions was to stop map glitches, but seeing as the entire thing is a simulation, there's plenty of realistic ways to stop map glitching. The buses in the centre of the map act as a giant wall to force the 3 lane philosophy instead of acting as cover to be used by players. They do this by stopping you from jumping over them or landing on them and using them as a higher position. Now this leads to some cunt hitting you with a sniper from a tiny angle if it was allowed, but it just means you need to get good and change your strategy to kill him. 
This design becomes really annoying when there is a fence you can clearly jump over, but the game doesn't let you do it. It takes away the advantage you gain from jump packs and forces you down a track that lets some prick of a shotgun hiding in a corner one-tap you. Overall, the maps feel like they were designed for competitive play, but with the new jump kits coming secondary. It leaves the feeling that Activision was jumping on a trend and rejecting the necessary changes to the game to implement this design properly. And this isn't just a problem in the multiplayer, the entire game has this exact same feeling. It took me 100 hours before I remembered to adjust my field of view since I've been so used to console. This fixes one of my biggest issues with the animations in this game, which is running. On the standard setting, your movement feels like a slow jog, but your arms moves it, move as if you're in a marathon. Setting your field of view to 105 solves this problem, makes hip fire easier, makes finding enemies easier. 120 on the other hand creates a weird warping effect on the edges of the screen that I find personally really distracting. This is a simple tweak, but it makes the game feel so much better. Lastly, it's time to get into the Black Ops 3 community, or at least what's left of it on PC. Xbox and PlayStation have an active player base, but PC has 2,000 players on average worldwide. In Australia, that's more like 50 people, and they all play between 5pm and 10pm. The problem with the community on PC is that half of them are veterans that will mop the floor with you, and the other half are inexperienced players, which causes most of the interactions to be about accusations. The frustration is understandable since no one enjoys getting wrecked by people that are god tier at a game. But what I notice of these players is that if you ask them to not use score streaks or certain guns to try and make it more fair, they will actually stop using score streaks and broken guns as long as you aren't being a salty asshole. It somewhat restored my hope in the COD community. Overall thoughts for multiplayer. It's not worth your money for just this mode. The map design doesn't encourage the use of the jetpacks, the weapons are either too weak or too strong, the netcode isn't great, the player base at times can be extremely toxic, sometimes really friendly, but unless you're willing to spend weeks trying to get to a level where you won't get thrashed by prestige masters, the game doesn't become that all that enjoyable. I'll give it an overall score at the end of the video. For zombies, I'll just hit on the new features since if you've played a Treyarch COD, you know how zombies works. Black Ops 3 has made a couple of nice changes to the zombies mode. Firstly, you can now put attachments and customised weapons for your personal playstyle. Being able to slap an elo on a sniper and a foregrip on a machine gun is a nice life improvement, making weapons like the Lotus actually viable. Secondly, they made the main easter egg easy to work out by yourself without needing a 16 step YouTube video with some guy going, Hey guys, I'm so excited to show you how to beat the Cthulhu faggot monster to unlock the pack a punch. If that helps you out, smash like and that subscribe button. It's just amazing what Treyarch has done to create such a cool character for us to fight. Jesus Christ, that made me fucking cringe there. If you've ever tried to do a cod easter egg, you know what I'm talking about. I honestly don't know which is worse. Fortnite or cod YouTubers. They both sound like they're recovering from a fucking stroke. Anyway, back to the game. There's now some eggs you can open up and get items or power-ups from, which is really useful if you're nearly out of ammunition. We also have the introduction of the Magua, which is more annoying than anything. For whatever reason, Treyarch feels the need to keep adding mini-boss enemies in all zombie maps now. But the third and final addition to zombies is Dr. Monty's Serum and Gobble Gum. Now the Gobble Gum that you unlock as you level up is a nice feature because it gives you an advantage as you play. My personal favourite has been In Plain Sight. A two use ability that causes zombies to ignore you for 10 seconds, which is great when you're up shit's creek and playing alone. Monty's serum is given at random intervals for buying doors, perks and mystery boxes, but the fact you can buy serum for gold gums feels like someone's going, Hey kid, wanna beat that record? Or get that awesome blood skin for your favourite gun that's mystery box only? Just give us some money. And we might just give you the gun, they'll let you do the trick. Overall, it's COD Zombies with a few gimmicks. The map isn't very good with zombies able to spawn ahead of you, which means that certain bottlenecks you can get stuck between two groups of zombies and die pretty damn quickly, and that just feels cheap. My other grievance with the map is the Pack-a-Punch room. There's a wall you have to run across and if you fuck it up when playing solo, you lose instantly, even if you have self-revive. Now, Zombies does have community maps made by modders, but if you're playing just the base game, don't buy it for Zombies. COD World War 2 does it significantly better. However, if you're a big fan of zombies, 
like playing modded maps and are willing to buy DLC maps, Black Ops 3 is definitely the best choice in the series. Black Ops 3 has maps from every Zombies mode in the series, as well as having its own maps, giving it the largest variety in the series. Technically, there is two campaigns. A story campaign and a zombie campaign called Nightmares. Both use the exact same maps, enemy placements and mini bosses, which is entirely immersion breaking in Nightmares. Starting with the story campaign, it felt like Treyarch went up to a fantasy writer and said, we want you to write the plot of our sci-fi shooter, because we don't understand anything about Asimov's three laws of robotics or the creation of AI. The plot itself doesn't have any kind of philosophy behind it, any kind of consistency. You get your limbs ripped off by robots, which Advanced Warfare did first, which causes you to become a cyborg, even though your internals would have been a tomato slushy, and you would have bled out in about a minute after having all your limbs ripped off. Which brings me to another problem. Every part of this story is filled with ridiculously over-the-top scripted scenes that destroy any semblance of believability. In particular, this scene bothered me. Cycle the fucking action! You're firing on an empty chamber! Who the fuck okay Treyarch said this was okay to go through? Agent Kane? Everything about this campaign felt cheap. And the boss fights added to this feeling by not doing anything but slow down the campaign. This also explains the two and a half hours of boring fucking cutscenes that were just constant exposition. Each boss is, shoot the armor. Hit it with the rocket, repeat four times and pick up ammo halfway through because we refuse to give you enough to do it properly. Oh, and you have to do this two more times to get through this section. Fuck you, Treyarch. When you're not fighting bosses, you're fighting drones, juggernauts and a ridiculous number of enemies. On average, you'll be killed between 150 and 200 enemies per level. And it's all a slow grind using cover to slowly kill them because if you try to play aggressively, you can have up to 15 enemies firing on you at the same time. This is where the health bar system becomes an issue. Normally you gauge how close to death you are by how much ketchup has been pegged at your screen. But not in this one. The furthest you get is if it's a red border, which instead of meaning you've been hit twice, means you're going to die in one hit. Even after completing this garbage campaign twice, I forgot this because it's completely different from any other COD or first person shooter. They also implemented a creator class system that allows you to earn campaign weapon skins and to adjust your game style. Unfortunately, the change of class spawns are never anywhere useful, so you generally end up with the wrong weapon for the situation. Just choose an assault rifle and overkill so you can have a sniper or shotgun secondary. A part of this custom class system is cybernetic abilities. There's three sets of abilities that are supposed to help you. Tech, melee, and another one I never used because it was pointless. Tech focuses on making the enemy's equipment malfunction and does allow you to control other drones. The melee focuses on one hit train takes down and concussion blasts. However, if you try to use these, you'll die because everyone around you will shoot and kill you in about two seconds. Quite frankly, the only useful ability is the drone hacking, which I forgot about until I had to do a mini boss and I couldn't find a rocket launcher. So I had to take over this little tank and kill it that way. Continuing with custom class, there's new perks. Two of those perks shouldn't be an equipable item. They should be standard. The first ability is the chance to pick up enemy weapons, something any competent game dev lets you do. And the second is the double jump feature, which requires equipping the perk and upgrading it, which is not explained in the game. You know, the whole cornerstone of the uh, new features. Wall running and double jumping, and they're just gonna leave that out for you to work out how to get it. The whole reason you can't pick up guns is because of the built-in idea requirements to operate the gun. Do you know why we don't have that in real life? Because it's a dumb fucking idea. The technology is unreliable and can cause malfunctions. Even if it was reliable, EMPs would make all guns unusable, and if that didn't kill you, you'd be unable to let an ally trying to save your life by using your rifle because they don't have the prints or aren't in the database to be able to use it successfully to save your life. Nothing in this campaign was thought through. All well done. It really felt like they were just throwing shit at a wall and seeing what sticks, which resulted in the destruction of any kind of immersion. 
The campaign isn't even any good to learn the movement mechanics, because they're completely different to the multiplayers. You'd probably use wall running twice during the whole thing. And you get the ability to climb up a wall that would normally need a double jump, which doesn't happen in multiplayer. So you'll have to relearn all of the movement systems anyway. This would have to be, if not the worst, one of the worst campaigns I have ever played. The story sucked, the gameplay was an irritating grind, and half the mechanics either weren't in multiplayer or barely functioned. This campaign was like building a house of sticks and duct tape. Technically it's functional, but the guy with an axe and nails doesn't have to worry about a strong wind destroying his home. Nightmares is a similar clusterfuck. It got rid of all the customization, including your gender and armor, which became annoying to me when they start stroking your character's ego about how strong she mentally is. Now maybe it's my paranoia, but this didn't happen in the main story, when you could choose to be a man, and you worked alongside an actually strong female character, despite a certain incident with a sniper rifle. But this seems like woke points that no one noticed because the nightmares mode is terrible. The literal two hours of cutscenes is just a silent video of monologuing on top of it, and the rest of the story is told by two inner voices, which is really fucking boring. The bosses in each level are still the same, which annoyed me when playing levels where there was no one alive to activate or operate these machines. But my biggest gripe of all was the fact that if you get hit by a zombie, your movement slows drastically, and you can turn 180 degrees after about 6 centuries of trying. Until you learn to use the double jump feature to get away from the zombie, you get stuck and you die. More annoying is you'll first learn this in an area where zombies spawn under the water, so you can't see where they are coming from, and in some areas you can't even jump high enough for the melee effect to wear off. It's infuriating and cheap. It shows just how little effort was put into this mode. Since Black Ops 2, Treyarch has promised fans a zombies campaign that they would enjoy, and both times they have deceived us. Time for its overall score. Campaign of Nightmares gets a 1 out of 10 for its terrible design and apathy. Base Zombies is a 4 out of 10, simply because its mechanics are solid and I like how the easter egg works, but the map isn't that fun. With mods or DLC I'll give it a 6.5, it doesn't do anything special but it does its job well. Multiplayer is a 5 out of 10. It does have many faults but it's playable and with time it can be enjoyable, but even previous Call of Duties have better mechanics and are more enjoyable. Console still has a player base if you really want to try it, but it's definitely not worth it on PC. Hey, thanks for watching, I really do appreciate it. I'll leave a comment if there's a game you'd like me to review on the plan right now is Fallout 4 and CSGO. Uh, if you really did enjoy it and you thought it was helpful, try sharing it. It really helps me out when people do that, it gives the channel some exposure. And remember, hit that subscribe and the notification bell, because I don't have a post cycle so you just be spamming my page and see nothing it just it's better off if you hit that bell and maybe youtube will do its job and you'll get a notification when i finally post a video but again thanks for coming i hope you have a good one